Hello, everybody. This is Chris Osborne, Program Director with Indiana First, uh, here today to talk to you a little bit about the, the four meetings that every team uh, should be having throughout the course of a year and every year. Uh, so regardless if you're a rookie team, you've just applied, uh, you're just getting going, this is your first time at it, or you're a 25-year veteran. Uh, four meetings uh, that you should be having. So the four meetings uh, would be one mentor meeting. Uh, this is, um, I'll get into this a little bit more in depth here in a bit. Uh, the next one would be call out meetings for students, mandatory parent meeting, uh, open house for sponsors and mentors, and then the secret fifth meeting or uh, just fifth meetings in general. So your mentor meetings, what should be happening here? These should be ongoing um, as regular as you can make them uh, that your mentors can attend. I think the key would be, can you get at least some of your mentors, uh, you know, a quorum uh, together uh, regularly, maybe it's monthly, uh, during build season it might be more regular than that. Uh, if, uh, if the team is meeting multiple days a week, uh, you might have a, a weekly mentor meeting uh, but then in the off season, maybe you meet once a month. Uh, I think it's important to keep all your mentors on the same page with the direction of the team. Uh, in the off season, it could be uh, how you're selecting your uh, team leaders for the next year. It could be any kind of purchases the team might make or decisions about uh, competitions for the next year, um, debriefing from the season past, uh, keeping just the open lines of communication, uh, how the um, mentors work together, uh, from a technical, non-technical aspect, uh, sharing ideas on, on mentor recruitment, sponsors, outreach, et cetera. Uh, I think your mentors are going to be a, a crucial part of the uh, continual mentor recruitment uh, and also sponsorships. They, they just tend to be professionals networked into the community. How can uh, your mentors help your team uh, meet other people that could become sponsors and mentors? I think they'll feel more engaged, your mentors uh, will feel more engaged and will be, uh, become more involved stakeholders in the team, take a little more ownership of what's going on. Uh, I also think that a good idea for these meetings is that they take place outside of your normal meeting facility. Uh, having kind of a social atmosphere uh, to, this, to these meetings uh, can certainly help. Uh, get away from the shop, uh, the school, et cetera. Uh, it might open things up a little bit. It might allow for some conversations uh, that might not take place in, in the shop or the facility. Um, and it's also a good thing to uh, meet socially with the other mentors on the team to get to know them personally a little bit. I will throw one caveat out there. Uh, if you are going to meet in public, if you're going to meet at a restaurant somewhere, be very careful about uh, speaking about individual students or maybe other mentors or other robotics teams things like that uh, in your conversations. You never know who is also in that uh, restaurant or public place. Uh, I know some teams like to find a, a restaurant uh, or some place nearby that might have a private meeting room. Uh, so check that out. And uh, if there's a cost associated with it, sometimes if you, you tell them with, your, with the school or uh, the robotics team, uh, make, they might waive whatever uh, fee you have. So that's definitely one uh, ongoing meeting that you should be having uh, every team, brand new, veteran, et cetera. Next is a call out meeting for students. Uh, I recommend that FRC teams and FTC teams, uh, really any level team, uh, have multiple call out meetings. So if you're a high school based team or a middle school based team doing a spring and fall call out session, is really important uh, in the spring it's going to be a you know come to a spring uh, meeting to learn a little bit more uh, get something in their hands that has maybe some summer dates of activities that are going on if you're going to attend any off-season competitions invite potential new students to those uh, if your team gets invited to iri and you've got some eighth graders coming in as ninth graders get that information to them before school gets out and it gets them connected with the team. Maybe you have a Google form, whatever it is, in the spring it's crucial. And with FLL or FTC, 
again, getting those kids in the spring to be thinking about it. Maybe they weren't on the team in the fall or throughout the year. And their sixth or seventh graders going to become eighth or seventh graders. Getting that information, getting having maybe one or two uh, meetings in the summer or the off season, uh, maybe even uh, getting their information about some STEM camps that it could they could attend in the summer. Any kind of value add that draws them closer to you and makes them appreciate and remember that oh the the robotics team this is something that uh, can add value to my life. So. Big thing is promoting these call-out meetings. I put on here creating posters. There's a website called Canva. Canva is a fantastic web resource that is free to use, and you can create really high-quality posters, flyers, uh, images for uh, your Facebook page. Uh, they are... Um, Free and easy to use, download as uh, PNG files, images files, or PDF files that then you can take straight to uh, the printer and get printed, uh, make copies, etc. Or if you want a, a, an image, a quick image for your Facebook header or for a Facebook post, Canva is a free resource that is easy to use and I highly recommend it. There are some uh, clip art type images within Canva that they charge for. And there are some pro features of Canva that you can pay for. Uh, and you will never get spammed by Canva by setting up an account. Highly recommend uh, this product. Uh, this, uh, again, it's quick and easy to whip up a, a recruitment poster, get an eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 17, get some prints, put them up around the school or wherever you're at. Uh, if you're in your if you're a community-based team, maybe the local coffee shops or places where uh, you know kids are uh, prone to be or parents are prone to be, uh, get it into the school announcements. Whatever that pathway is, whoever the person's in charge of it, get it in there. Social media. Utilize your current social media, but also find out in your school district or at your high school or middle school, wherever you're at, find out who the person is that runs the social media accounts. And it could be um, even a publications like the, the school newspaper uh, yearbook folks, a lot of those now also have Twitter and Facebook accounts. Utilize those. Go to those and ask uh, if they can help you promote your call-out meetings. Uh, incentivize your current students for bringing friends. Uh, if you have any kind of award system, if you have a varsity letter uh, available within your team, if you have uh, or just budget some fun giveaways throughout the year. And it could be Amazon gift cards, it could be Starbucks gift cards, whatever it is, figure out a way to incentivize your current students to get friends to come to meetings to learn more. Again, trying to reach out and get some of those non-traditional STEM students. Have some of your students bring some friends of theirs that take a lot of art classes or business classes, uh, English classes. Uh, get them uh, to understand that first is a lot more than building a robot. Uh, emphasize the opportunity to earn scholarships and internships on your posters, on your flyers, on everything that you're promoting for the call out meeting. Are you interested in learning about $80 million in college scholarships? Are you interested in learning about internships, careers? These are things that FIRST is about. So don't just make your, your flyer, your poster about a robot. In fact, within Canva, very quickly or whatever platform you're using it could be powerpoint uh to make your your flyers or your posters you could very quickly take one template and create five different posters or flyers so that you can address are you interested in cad machining things like that and that goes up in the hallways down and around the industrial tech wing are you interested in graphic design illustrator photoshop videography boom you take the you know and you want to learn and you want to earn 80 million dollars in college scholarships take those posters and put them in the the art hallway or the graphics of wherever those classes are and now you've got three or four posters that you can put up around the building in different hallways that reach out to those students saying oh i am interested in presentation skill development and uh and uh, team spirit and graphic design. I am interested in those things. I didn't realize robotics had that. 
The key is get them to the call out meeting, right? And that's what those posters are about. Uh, do a robot demo at your call out. Uh, and, it, and if you've got to sign up for your call out, and if there's something that you can do to promote it at lunch, get a robot into the cafeteria at lunch. Uh, to, that draws a lot of attention. If you can't, uh, if you don't have a robot or you don't have a working robot, you can get, give me a call, send me an email. I can get my Frisbee shooter out there uh, and we can put it in the cafeteria and drive it around. Uh, it'll be fun. Uh, make sure you've got forms and you've got information for students to fill out. Make sure at your call out meeting that you've got a takeaway for those students to take with them, to take home, to put in front of their parents that's got a another meeting where it's, you've got the call out, it might happen during the school day, it might happen right after school, but it's got a date of a robotics team meeting that also invites the parents or guardians. That's going to be key, because that next meeting needs to include a mandatory parent piece. So, mandatory parent guardian meeting. This is also going to be key. Your marching bands are doing this. Your sports teams are doing this. The, the show choirs. All the organizations in your school right now that you look at and say, wow, have they got their stuff together? Wow, do they have a lot of parent involvement? Why? You know, it's because they require mandatory parent meetings. So make sure you're having one. And if you've not required parent involvement in your robotics team yet, now is the time to start figuring out how you can uh, make it mandatory for some parent involvement. And I wouldn't say, look at what the band is doing and do that. It might be too much in year one for you to, uh, the year one of getting parent involvement might be too much to ask them to take on that much. But think of a few things that as a mentor or a group of mentors that you're spending time doing right now that your parents could help you with and it would take that off of your plate so that you could focus on getting the kids, the, the kids, the skills they need uh, that help them build robots and do the graphic design and do all those things that we want them to get out of the first experience. So it could be feeding during um, build season. It could be helping to organize the, the ordering of team t-shirts or uh, helping plan the logistics of travel, getting the hotel rooms booked, things like that. Um, at this meeting, make sure there is a sign-up sheet for your parents and that, that before they leave, they are all signing up for one thing. It's not too much to ask uh, and say, every parent of every kid or guardian has to take on one thing in order for this child to participate. This also starts to set the groundwork for you to, to for people to understand that this is not like another club in the school. This is that first robotics, you can't, Come and go is you, you can't just come once or twice and expect to get something out of this program. That this is not, even though the school might call it a club, participation on a first robotics competition team is more like being on a varsity sport. And this really starts to put that into play. This is more like being in the marching band or the show choir. It's that level of commitment. Put the budget in front of the parents the absolute full-on budget in front of them. Let them know how much registration costs, travel, that uh, in case you make it to the state championship, that it's going to cost more. That if you make it to the world championship, it's going to cost more. So get that in front of them. And when you plan your budget with your parents, plan your budget such that you are going to the world championships. It is better to plan your budget and start working on sponsorships and starting to work on how do we raise the money to build a robot and compete and go to the world championships and be prepared for it than it is to say, we're going to just try to you know make it through districts and get a robot out there. And then all of a sudden finding yourself qualifying for state and not having the money. So it's better to plan ahead. If you have leftover money at the end of the season, now then you can meet with your parents and your students and your mentors to say, hey, we didn't make it to Worlds. We budgeted for it. We've got this money. Let's, up, let's update our shop. Let's get some equipment. Let's buy a trailer. Let's look at things that we can do to continually improve the team. And this is a great learning opportunity for your students as well to take place, uh, to take part, for, uh, forgive me there, to take part in the budgeting process. 
crucial that the students are uh, a part of the budgeting process so that they can talk intelligently about it with the judges uh, to put them in a position uh, for the entrepreneurship award. Plus, it's just a great experience for the students to have to understand where the money is coming from and where the money is going. So put that in front of them. Uh, if you don't have a parent booster organization, now's the time to start working towards one. This will bring a higher level of sustainability uh, to your program or predictability. Uh, your, you know, sustainability is going to be tough. You're always going to be asking for money. You're always going to be asking for parent involvement. But this helps you find more predictable sources of involvement and money. Uh, parents can help take ownership of the program. Now, it's, it's crucial that you clearly define the roles of the parents in this organization and the roles of the mentors and the head coach uh, of the program and that there is a firewall between those. Uh, just like sports programs, it's crucial to make sure that your parents understand that the lead mentor, the head coach, makes student-related decisions in terms of drive team and who's on what sub team and who gets, you know, those pieces are on the coach and the mentors. And that the parents, there's a firewall there that the parents cannot be a part of those conversations, just like parents uh, cannot be a part of the conversation with a football coach on who gets to start on Friday night? What what kind of defense are they going to run? And and things like that. So it's it's important that you set that aside, that you set that up very clearly first as you're forming this. You will have parents early on as you get parents involved in your program. You will have a few who will rise up quickly as good organizers. Use them and get them involved, and and then start having conversations with them about. How do we grow this? How do we move from just kind of a, a semi-formal kind of group of people to a, maybe a more formal 501c3 nonprofit parent booster club? They'll be able to help you find more mentors, more sponsors. This is, this, this again, the network piece as well. Plus, also, they can help alleviate some of the pressure of some of the things that the mentors have been doing now that the parents can take that off their plate. So an open house for sponsor mentor recruiting. Okay, this is another meeting that every team should be having. Press release this to the local media. Use social media. Use your school district social media. Uh, have current sponsors help promote this within their own companies. Uh, there is a, a, um, a link to a Google Drive folder with uh, press release templates. Uh, the link on the Indiana First website under resources, you will find a series of press releases that you can just download and fill in and, and send to your local media. They love covering things like this, especially the more local the media is, the more coverage you're going to get, and people in your community read those. Uh, send Send print invitations to local invitation. Uh, to, sorry, to local businesses, elected officials, etc. Use the local chamber of commerce directory as a way to get their addresses. Print invitations are effective, highly effective, and elected officials, especially, are more likely to attend something that they have been handwritten invited to versus an email. Uh, and when sending to a, a member of Cong Congress, make sure that a written invitation goes to a state side office. So here in Indiana, for example, if you're sending to a member of Congress in DC, send it to their Indiana-based office, not the DC office. They will get it more quickly, they will get it, uh, and they will actually see it very quickly uh, and will respond. So use Google Maps to find specific companies that maybe you're targeting for sponsorship and or mentors. Invite them. Uh, I did put a couple of uh, things on here in terms of creating handwritten invitations. Uh, you can quickly, with Vistaprint, 4imprint, Shutterfly, there's a lot of different online resources there. Canva, for example, uh, going to a local print shop, sometimes they'll be willing to donate some printing. Uh, but But definitely make sure that you are using the media, using the social media, and handwritten invitations to local businesses, the Chamber of Commerce, elected officials, a mayor if you have one, 
state representatives, state senators, uh, local, uh, your school board, please make sure your school board attends. Your school board has members that are that work in your community that are connected to the larger community and can help get you networked and connected to other companies. Prepare your students, parents, mentors, et cetera, for this event. Have a presentation ready to give, three to five minutes, that focuses on the why of first, not the what. Uh, I put a link down on the bottom to Simon Sinek's TED Talk on uh, people buy why you do things, not what you do, but why you do things. It's called the Golden Circle. Watch that TED Talk. Show it to your team and then have a conversation about the why. Why are we doing first? Not just we're building a robot and it's this tall and that heavy and it competes in that game, but why? We are preparing young people for the workforce. We want young people to know about the career opportunities they have in front of them. We want to be able to encourage young people to go into STEM, but come back to our community and live and work. Right? Those those whys are what is what's going to sell people on sponsoring and mentoring your team, not the what. Make sure that you have students that are assigned and ready and prepped to meet and greet visitors. If you have targeted people that are coming, member of commerce, a local state representative, a, a specific business leader, Make sure that you, you have students that are specifically designed to be the ones who are going to meet and greet that person and show them around, that they are prepared to engage with that person, talk with them, show them around, answer their questions, uh, and then also have a time where they all get to watch the three to five minute conversation or the presentation. Uh, the open house continued. Make sure that you've got a call to action. When you get all these people to your facility for this meeting, there needs to be a call of action. And the call to action could have multiple pieces. Let them and have them have a takeaway that they can take with them with this call to action. And it is sign up to mentor, consider sponsorship, and here are the three levels or four levels, whatever levels you have. $50, $200, $500, $1,000, whatever those are, and the benefits being put on our pit banner, being put on the robot, being on our website, whatever those benefits are, make sure you've got them typed out and ready to go. Uh, make sure that you get business cards and make sure visitors are filling out a contact form for follow up. And they all leave with a way to follow up and that you promise to follow up with them and then follow up with them. Make sure they get a thank you card for attending. It could be an electronic thank you card or a print thank you card if you have got mailing addresses, but if people come, they get a handwritten thank you card for having attended that will leave a huge impression on them uh, and it will go a long way to continuing your relationship. Again, in this case of trying to find sponsors and mentors, you are not trying to find somebody who wants to have a one-time transaction. Look at our robotics team, isn't it great? Donate to us. Oh, okay, here's $1,000, thank you, we're done. That's not sponsorship relations. This is a relationship, like any other relationship, where you need to nurture it, work with them, thank them, keep them involved, keep them updated on what's going on with the team, keep reaching out to them, invite them to other things, invite them to competitions, invite them to feel like they're a part of the experience with you. Let them know how things are going, show them the robot, offer to bring your robot to their office, if that's feasible. But it's an ongoing relationship, and like any good ongoing relationship, it should grow and develop and become even more. The company might try to provide mentors down the road. They might grow the amount of money they're giving you. They might decide to continue giving you money, but support some pipeline support in your school. So now not only are you getting money for FRC, but you could go to them and say, we'd like to get some additional monies from you to start First Lego League or First Lego League Junior or First Tech Challenge. And the fifth meeting or meetings. 
these are school slash community meetings. These really are more about presentations uh, and getting out into your community. So instead of having meetings at your facility or like your mentor meeting, maybe going to a restaurant or somewhere nearby, this is really about getting at all these groups that can help you, one, inspire more people to want to get involved in high quality STEM mentoring or could connect you to sponsorships and mentors or provide sponsorships and mentors. So PTOs within your district. You should try to get on the, the PTO schedule of every elementary school and middle school in your school district. Some of you out there only have one or two elementary schools in your school district. Get on their calendar at some point for the PTO to go do a presentation about FIRST and what FIRST is about, the why of FIRST, explain what you're doing at the high school and how that elementary school could implement high quality STEM mentoring there that can feed into the high school program and how the PTO could help maybe uh, raise some money on the front end to help provide startup. That's PTOs are fantastic at this and they want high quality programs in their schools for their kids. Uh, if you have an education foundation, almost every school district in the state of Indiana has an education foundation in their district. Find out who's your, your foundation is, find out who's running it, Sometimes it's a volunteer board. Sometimes you'll even have an executive director. Find out who those people are. Get on their schedule. They have grants. Get in front of them. Talk to them about the STEM programs that you're running. See if there might be some grants that you could get access to or ways that you could work with them to maybe help them raise money. Uh, maybe they've got an event coming up and you could do a robot demo at that event. And it would help them, help them raise money. And now they're going to, again, build a relationship with you. And that volunteer board of directors or the executive director are also connected to the community. Again, networking. They're going to have opportunities for you to meet more people. Other groups, uh, Rotary, Lions, 4-H, and so many more. Now I realize I have a typo. More is M-O-R-E, not M-R-E. That's meals ready to eat. So make sure that you're reaching out to these groups, find where they are in your communities, and it could be a community foundation, economic development, workforce development, chambers of commerce. Find out where and who are in these different organizations, business networking groups, uh, all over the district. If you go to your public library, you can find a list of public meetings that are gonna take place there and see the different groups that are meeting in the library and say, oh, I've never heard of that group before. Reach out to them and ask if you could come talk to them about the robotics program. Speaking of the library, you also need to be working with your library. They love STEM. Do robot demos, work with the library to put on really cool events for young kids and their parents will come. And then while the parents are there, you can have a few students on your team playing with the kids, showing them robots, doing STEM activities, and other students on the team going to the parents and talking to them about, here's First Lego League Junior, here's First Lego League, here's how you get this started at the school. We want to get this program going, here's how you can do this. Here's a flyer, Call, email this person to learn more. So, the four meetings, really five, uh, that uh, you should be having for your teams. Again, really this, this uh, could go across just pretty much any of the first program teams. Uh, first Lego League, really, you should be having call out meetings. You should be recruiting mentors. You should be uh, trying to recruit sponsors. Certainly, you're gonna be looking at uh, different levels of sponsors. Uh, your, your budget is going to be lower than an FRC team. So you might not be targeting some of the same larger companies uh, that an FRC team is targeting, but you could maybe work with your FRC team in your area to say, could we work together on getting some sponsors and split the money and share the share the money and go in front of them and say, look at this amazing K-12 STEM program. So now company ABC, instead of just having impact on the high school team, now you could have a broader impact across the school district. Uh, and and make a, a huge difference in the lives of a lot of kids.
Uh, a few resources here. Of course, the first fundraising toolkit uh, on the first website. Uh, again, Canva, online image editor, flyer, poster creator uh, with Canva. If you need a Facebook ad or a, a Twitter header, whatever, they've got pre-formatted templates you can use. Um, there is a, a chamber and foundation map uh, that I will put a link to uh, under the description uh, of this video when I upload it to our website. Uh, this is a, a map created by me that is a it's a Google My Map that shows every chamber of commerce and community foundation in the state, uh, so that you can start to look at uh, like with community foundations, do they have current STEM grants that you're not aware of, or could they help raise money for some STEM grants? Uh, they also may provide scholarships. Uh, and then the FRC budget, there will be a link to um, an example FRC budget. Uh, so if you've never really put a budget together before, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend you have your students involved from, from the get-go in the budgeting process, that they understand all the costs associated, the costs, uh, and, the, and they understand how the logistics of purchasing and ordering and delivering and all of that works. These are great experiences for these young people to be able to say that they did these things, they learned these things when they're talking to colleges, when they're talking to future employers, uh, that they've already been a part of, of, of purchasing and sourcing materials for a robot, and ordering bulk material and finding donations and, and things like that. So thank you for your time today. Uh, again, as always, if you have questions, you can email me. And my email is cosborne at indianafirst.org. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out and uh, if, uh, with questions, concerns, etc. And I can certainly share uh, any of the links or ideas with you. Uh, I'd be willing to come out and do some presentations for your team and work with you on uh, strengthening the predictability of your revenue stream, your mentor stream, etc. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.